All right, so we're going to be talking about complex numbers here. I don't know why I start every video video off with all right, but I do. It's one of my things, I guess. So complex numbers. We run into complex numbers when we try to solve quadratics where there's a non-real solution. So let me show you an example here. I'm going to show you an example of a problem that we've seen before. Okay, so we have x squared minus 16 equals 0. And if we notice, this is difference of squares. So we could factor if we wanted to x plus 4, x minus 4, and then set each factor equal to 0 using our zero product property. And then we can solve each one of these little linear equations for negative 4 and 4 respectively. However, the question becomes, how do you solve this? Okay, x squared plus 16. Well, if you notice, if you think about <clears throat> our, our rules for factoring, all right, and that, more importantly, that factoring flowchart. All right, so if we look at this factoring flowchart, notice binomials, you know, in the middle of your screen, uh, perfect squares, and then this sum that I'm looking at, it's kind of hard to see it. I don't know why it's not letting me. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. So right here uh, is the word sum, okay? If you follow to the right, it says, does not factor. X squared plus 25 equals prime. Well, what that really means, okay, is that although it does not factor, that doesn't mean there's no solutions to it. It just means that the solutions are complex. Okay? So, we know X squared plus 16 equals 0 does not factor. However... We can use our square root property to say, well, we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. That will yield x squared equals negative 16. And then if we take the square root of both sides, and remember, anytime you take the square root of both sides, you have to include plus or minus. On the left-hand side, you're going to get this plus or minus negative square root of 16. Okay. Now, the negative square root of 16 is a complex number. In fact, if you tried to uh, put this into your calculator. Okay, let's get our calculator here out. So if you tried to plug this into your calculator, let me just clear it out. Square root, negative 16. Notice you're gonna get a non-real answer. In fact, this is error, non-real answer. And that's because the answer that we are looking for does not exist in the real number system. What we're looking for is a complex number. So, by definition, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Now, if we know that, what we can do with our plus or minus the square root of negative 16 is we can separate that as negative 1 times 16 underneath the radical, which means we can break it apart. Let me write that better. We could break this apart. And then finally, we can simplify this accordingly. First, we know the square root of i, or the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 16 is 4. So this would be plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus 4i. And that would be the solution to this problem. Okay? It's just a non real result, it's a complex number. So in general, A complex number has the form a plus or minus bi. Now the a is the real part, and then the bi is the imaginary part. All right, so in the answer above, I guess technically we could say x equals 0 plus or minus 4i. Okay, where the real part is zero and the imaginary part is 4i. Okay, now I do want to just write down a couple things about complex numbers. First, we know the square root of negative one equals i. Okay, now we need to be really, really careful about the next thing I'm going to say because a lot of students. 
they understand what it is or they know what it is, but they, they don't understand why it is the way that it is. So I squared equals the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one. Okay. Now, when you look at this, okay, you're going to be really careful because a lot of people think that this is going to turn out to be positive one, but it's not. Here's what happens. The square root of negative one times the square root of negative one is really this, the quantity negative one squared. Okay. And this is where students think, oh, I'm going to write this. This is where students think, oh, well, this is going to turn out to be the square root of one because negative one squared is positive one. And then the square root of one is one. And this is completely incorrect, completely incorrect. You never, ever want to do this. You got to go back to the basics of mathematics. Now, what I mean by that is this. Remember the radical symbol. All that means is that you have a fractional exponent of one half. Okay. And according to the rules of it, or the, the uh, order of operations, you do parentheses first, exponent second. So notice what we have to do here is we have a power rule. We need to multiply the exponents. And that will yield us quantity negative 1 to the first power. So i squared equals negative 1. Now, let me just, let me just recap real quick. I equals I, which is the square root of negative one. Okay. I squared equals negative one. You can use these two to find any exponent of I all by knowing these two. So I to the third is really I to the second times I, which is going to be negative one times I. which is negative i. And then i to the fourth is i to the second times i to the second, which is going to be negative one times negative one equals positive one. <clears throat> so just to clean this all up, i equals i, i squared equals negative one, i to the third equals i, oh, I'm sorry, i to the third equals negative i, and then i to the fourth equals positive one. <clears throat> and this process will repeat over and over again. So in red, I'll do the next four and you'll see how it works. I to the fifth is I to the fourth times I, but I to the fourth we know is one times I, which equals I. So do you see how it equals I again? Now I to the sixth is going to be I to the fourth times I to the second. And notice on the left hand side, we already have i to the second. So we can deduce that this is going to be negative one. i to the seventh is going to be i to the fourth times i to the third, which is going to be negative i. And then i to the eighth is going to be i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is positive one. See, what's happening here is this. In blue, coming down this column, you always have i to the fourth. Now, in yellow, notice i, i to the second, i to the third, and then i to the fourth. So you can figure out whatever exponent of i you have, and you can figure out exactly what it's going to be very quickly. The key, honestly, is right here. Every multiple of four will be positive one. So if I asked, what does I to the 23rd equal? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to break this down into I to the fourth raised to some exponent times I to whatever is left over. All right. Now, what I mean by that is this. We know five times four equals 20. So the five comes right here. And then you can see that there's three left over. So this will be negative i. Okay? Now another one, I'll do another one for you. I to the 42nd power. 
Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this again. So uh, 4 goes into 42. 10 times with 2 left over. So this is going to equal negative 1 because we know this is going to be positive 1 times negative 1. Okay? And that's how easy figuring out any exponent of i will be. Now we're going to look at the algebra of complex numbers. All right, so the first two we'll look at, and I'll do an example of each, would be addition and subtraction. And this is really easy. The key, you will combine the real parts. And then you will combine the imaginary parts. Okay? So an example would be something like 3 minus i minus 2 plus 4i. Okay? First thing we're going to do, we're going to distribute the negative. And then we just combine the real parts, and then we combine the imaginary parts. 3 minus 2 is 1. Negative i minus 4i is going to be negative 5i. All right, there's that example. Okay, pretty straightforward, like I said. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we can multiply We can multiply complex numbers. And in a way, you already know how to do this. Okay? Um, I think the easiest thing to do is just use your distributive property. So we're going to get 2 plus 2i when we distribute the 2. And then when we distribute the 3i, we're going to get plus 3i plus 3i squared. Now, the key to this is first just rewriting it and then simplifying anything we can. And notice that i squared is gonna be negative one. So this would be two plus five i plus three times negative one, which is gonna be two plus five i minus three and two minus three is negative one plus five i. <clears throat> All right, so that's how we multiply with, with uh, complex numbers. The difficult part is dividing because we got to remember yeah, I'll draw an arrow. We got to remember conjugate pairs. All right. <clears throat> so for example, if I wanted to divide 3 plus 5i divided by 1 minus 2i, okay? My goal is to get this to look something like a plus, plus or minus bi. Could be a plus bi, could be a minus bi, doesn't matter. But we just want one complete um, complex number. So to do that, we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So... 1 plus 2i. And by doing that, <clears throat> what will happen is we will completely eliminate the i's in my denominator. Okay? So if you're asking yourself, well, how do we multiply conjugates very quickly? You've done this before. x plus 2 times x minus 2 are conjugate pairs, which means this is going to equal x squared minus 4. It's difference of squares. So if you know that and you can recognize that, then in your denominator, it's just going to be 1 minus 2i squared. Okay? The numerator is the tough part. The numerator, you actually have to figure that out. So underneath here, I'm just going to write it nice and neat. 3 plus 6i plus 5i plus 10i squared, which will be 3 plus 11i minus 10 because remember i squared is going to be 10 or i'm sorry i squared is going to be negative 1. now 3 minus 10 is negative 7 
plus 11i. And now we're going to simplify that denominator. Negative 7 plus 11i all over 1 plus 2. Because remember, i squared is negative 1. So this becomes 1 minus 2 times negative 1 or <clears throat> 1 plus 2, which is going to be 3. So <clears throat> you really need to read the directions on how they want you to uh, write the answer because negative 7 plus 11i over 3 is acceptable. Uh, however, oh, I made a, I made a math I made a math mistake. Oh, I hope you're not writing in pen and I'm so sorry for this. This is going to be 1 plus 4. So it's going to be 1 plus 4 or 5. So oh boy, <laughs> don't kill me on the comments, but uh, nobody's perfect. So please don't, <clears throat> you know, crucify me over, over this. But uh, you're going to read the directions because they're going to tell you how they want the answer. This is an acceptable answer. However, uh, if they want a plus or minus bi form, then you're going to have to separate <clears throat> the, uh, the, the denominator to make it negative 7 over 5 plus 11i over 5. Okay, notice the real part and imaginary part. Okay, so just to finish up here, like when would you see something like this? Well, let's say, for example, you are uh, finding the solution to... 4x squared minus 24x <clears throat> plus 37 equals 0. Well, because these numbers are rather large, I would not complete the square. I would not try to factor this. Um, square root property fails. I would go right to my quadratic equation. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a is going to equal 4, b equals negative 24, and c equals 37. <clears throat> now, the reason why I would do this is the quadratic formula works on any quadratic equation, anything. Factoring is very specific. Square root property is very specific. Completing the square works on any problem, just like the quadratic formula. It's just the quadratic formula is just so much easier. So what we're going to do is we're just going to be careful. We're going to substitute appropriately. So let's see here what we get. 24 to the second, negative 24 to the second, minus 4 times 4 times 37, all over 2 times 4. All right, now this turns out to be positive 24 plus or minus the square root of negative 16, all over 8. Now, <clears throat> let me highlight it. That number right there, even over here, this is called the discriminant. All right, and your discriminant is going to tell you what type of solutions you're going to get. So clearly here, we're going to get complex solutions. So I get 24 plus or minus 4i all over 8, which will reduce down into x equals 3 plus or minus 1 half i. Okay, so you would definitely see complex solutions when you are trying to uh, solve quadratic equations. And then, more importantly, uh, if you were just to graph 4x squared minus 24x plus 37, so let me go ahead and let me pull up Desmos for us. Here we go. So graphing calculator. So, uh, you know, y equals 4x squared minus 24x plus 37. What you'll notice here is uh, this parabola does not touch the x-axis at all. So just by looking at this graph, I can automatically tell you we're going to have complex numbers for, for solutions of x. And that is because there's no x-intercept here. Okay, so I hope this video helped and uh, see you in the next one.